All right, hello. I'm actually continuing this again with OS Dev. I wanted to get a better file system, so that's why I'm on this Wikipedia page for a file system. <laughs> There's not too much I'm here on here I'm going to go over, but uh, the one I'm thinking about moving towards, the one that I have ended up testing over the past month and a half, maybe longer, has been a sort of small Minix slash Unix oriented file system, uh, kind of like ext2, kind of like the Minix file system. If we go to it, well, I already had it open, but <laughs> ext2, you know, we have this concept of inodes and disk blocks and um, bitmaps, possibly. You have some indirect and direct pointers. You have all this stuff um, accessible for file data and everything. You have directories, you have hierarchical structure. So currently, you know, I have sort of a CPM styled flat file system, which I think I have in this one. You know, if we run the current version of the OS, I have something like this, you know, sort of control program for micro style flat file system. We just have a starting sector and a size in sectors. Uh, entry number that I never ended up using, what kind of file it is. So I'm going to move from that more towards what I have over here, which doesn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't be me if it actually worked, right? No, what I have over here which is going to be more of a Unix style or a Minix style uh, sort of subset uh, file system. I have the size and bytes here. I have a date and time. I have the name. I have if it's a directory or not. We can make directory. We can change directory. So I'll just have like folder A. I do this again. It's updated. The size is updated by default. New folders were only, or new directories, folders, I'll use them interchangeably, but they will only have dot and dot dot standing for the current folder and the previous folder its parent, if you will, respectively. Um, we can move files around. Like I can move the test font into folder A. I have relative paths worked out for dot and dot dot. So our current one, we're in root. It's noted here. Test font is gone. However, if I look at folder A, it moved into there. And we can use files in there if I type them correctly. Um, except, no, I can't. I can't actually do that. <laughs> I do have change directory working. Apparently some bugs are still wrong. What if I'm in... So if I'm in the folder, it does work. Okay. But that's okay. That's a, uh, a bug there. So it probably doesn't work backwards either. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, interesting. It might not work with the dot, but it does with the dot dot. Some issue with resolving the path names there. But anyway, just to show that relative paths work and they don't. Because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Editor. Then yeah, relative paths do work. I kind of changed how these things work a little bit with the naming as far as saving the file and all, but it does save it to the current directory that we're in. Uh, I don't have CD. I've changed directory. I should make like an alias command for that. But if I try to run, let's say folder A, test file dot text, it should print it to the screen. I should be able to edit that from that folder. So let's do folder A file.txt. It loads it up. We'll just add a 2 in the front. We'll update it. We'll go back. Um, just for the sake of showing that relative paths work, it should have updated that. We can access it. Yeah, so okay. We'll have a basic file system that I'm going to set up for that, as well as later on some system calls for open, close, read, write, and seek at the very least, and some standard I.O. functions, abstractions on top of those sort of wrappers over those system calls for fopen, fread, fwrite, etc. And we'll have, you know, program functions and abstractions built on top of those as far as reading and writing files, like in the editor. So everything's just, you know, layers upon layers upon layers. But I just want to say, you know, ext2 is there. Minix is where I kind of... I, I was reading the, the Tannenbaum or Tannenbaum, however you say that. His OS book, at least for file system and processes. I don't have processes, but file system is kind of what I was getting inspiration over. So for this video, at least, if it's not too long, hopefully... <laughs> I'm going to lay out a basic structure for our disk, our new disk image for this new file system. I'll have a C program instead of the current shell program to add file table entries to make this sort of binary file or disk image. And it'll be laid out like this. We'll have a certain number of disk blocks per sort of section of our image. And the disk block, I'm just going to make 4096 bytes to be similar to the virtual memory page size of 4096 bytes to be sort of a simple implementation there. But if this was like in an overall partition for a UEFI or a GPT formatted disk and all in our certain partition for our OS, we have our disk image. So these, the disk blocks from the 
Start of the actual disk that this is running on should be kind of relative, but I'm going to do absolute like LBA addressing just to make things simple, but keep that in mind. So for this disk image, the, the first thing is going to be the boot block. So eight sectors, 4096 bytes. I'm going to put in the boot sector and any bootloader files we can. The second block will be a super block, and that's sort of an overall metadata block for the file system. It'll have like the number of inodes in the file system, the number of data blocks maybe, the number of bits in the inode and data bitmap. Um, just relative file system bookkeeping info that we can update as we go along and make things, you know, manageable within the kernel. Now, after the super block, I'm, I'm going to have an inode bitmap, a certain number of blocks for an inode bitmap where one bit corresponds to one inode. And an inode is just sort of a data structure holding metadata on a per file basis. So the size of a file in bytes, uh, what disk blocks hold the file's data. Um, that sort of thing. The times the file was last accessed or deleted, uh, the number of times it's open in memory, in case you want to handle uh, multiple things like soft or hard links, symbolic links, uh, Windows calls them shortcuts, a copy of a file in two different directories. If you delete it in one, you don't necessarily want that to be removed from the other directory where the file is, right? So you can have like a reference count or something within an inode, where if you delete a file, you reduce that count. If it's zero, well, we'll just get rid of the data. If not, then we'll still keep it, but we'll just remove it from that other directory, we'll say. So that can be underlying like a, a copy command in the future or something, right? Um, but inodes for a bitmap, one bit will be one inode, one metadata structure for a file. After a certain number of blocks for that, we'll have a, um, Minix called it zones, I'm, I'm just gonna call it a data bitmap, where one bit corresponds to one block on the disk. The one bit will be 4096 bytes, similar to the bitmap for the memory, um, the physical memory manager, that map, where one block corresponds to one page. So that'll just hold these. A one will mean the bit is set and that data block is in use. A zero will mean the data is not in use, it's free. So we'll have that. After the data bitmap, we'll have the actual inode data itself, these structs in, on the disk. And after so many inodes, we'll have the actual file data. And there will be different types of files, like directories or normal files. I'm not going to start with sockets or anything, maybe later on. But I don't know how to do that yet and make it work well. So I'll have normal files and I'll have directories. And directories, the data on disk for a directory will just be directory entries, which um, probably will just be a file name and an inode number. The whole purpose of inodes is just mainly to, one, to keep the metadata for the file and also to have sort of a unique identity per file. So an inode will have an inode number or an ID or what have you, and that'll correspond to a unique number per file. And we can keep track of files that way on the disk. But I'm going to make a C program that basically writes this stuff um, to a file, a binary file. It'll be the new os.bin, and I'll try to do that. And later on, we can get into open file tables and inode tables and things and how inodes are laid out. My inodes will be different. I'm not going to have just a data block within the inode because that kind of adds up and gets out of hand a little bit. I'm going to do more like ext4 did. So ext4 had a concept called extents. So extents, an extent, they store four, I'm also going to have four, but basically an extent will just have where on disk this file data starts and how long this file data is, both in terms of blocks. So I'll have an extent, I'll have four extents directly in an inode, and I'll have like an indirect extent as well. Um, ext4 uses a tree, I'm not going to have a tree. I'm going to have something similar to this, maybe double indirect and single indirect. Where instead of something just being a disk block in the inode, 4096 byte block location, I'll have an extent, which will say a block location, but also a length in blocks. So if a file is like five blocks in length, I won't need five different things within an inode. I'll need one extent where the length of that extent is five blocks. And that'll just make things a little bit easier to read and write with files later instead of having to run through all of this stuff. We'll run through it a little bit easier in like loops. Um, I probably will have at least a single indirect block, meaning that the extent will hold the location and length of a number of disk blocks that contain extents that contain the actual data on the disk. A double indirect block just adds another layer. And that's how you get larger files, but at the extent of a memory and I.O. performance. So I had a lot of changes that I made over the past couple months. I have about 2,000 to 2,500 line changes, so it'll take a while to go through. 
Um, but I'll be looking at, you know, my diffs and things to, to help me along here. Um, but okay. I want to go in here, the test OS. No, I don't. That's wrong. That's a lie. I want to go in the actual OS that doesn't have any changes, right? I modified the make file. How did I do that? Oh, I added that. Okay, yeah. So before we do anything, I guess I'll show it makes currently. Although something changed, I might have updated a package or something. I don't know. But I did have um, just these plain star.c and star.assembly, and it was not working when I made the file. Now it is for some reason, but it wasn't before, and it didn't run. And I found that the issue was that I had to double quote my names in here, at least for the find right here. So I'm just doing this. I mean, the extensions are double quoted at the end anyway, but that just makes sure that I can make it successfully every time. Um, I had a bug where that wasn't working for some reason. It wasn't, it just had, you know, booting from hard disk. Like it was never making the boot sector and some other stuff, but it works if I add that double quote. Anyway, that's the only change. I'll go from here. So I want to make a, I want to make something to make <laughs> the, uh, the new disk image, right? I'm going to call it make disk or make image. Uh, I'll call it make disk. It'll be a C program. Um, I'm going to be having file system implementation details and stuff, so I'm going to make a uh, a new folder for that. We'll make a directory. I'm just going to call it FS for file system. We might rename it later if we want to have multiple file systems and things. They could be under here, or it could be under like a drivers folder or something. But we'll just do that. So I've include FS. We'll just do FS.h for the header. So I'm going to start by laying out the structures. Um, in the FS header, right? I will do that, fs.h. This will be file system definitions, maybe, maybe helper functions, maybe just one or two. I don't like doing include guards, so I just like a one-liner. We'll do that. Probably gonna be doing standard int as normal, but that may be all we need in this file. So the main things I'm going to need, you know, are gonna be the super block, Possibly the boot block, basically the sections of the disk that I was showing, that small image. Inode, we'll need some bitmaps, although I don't really need special types for bitmaps. They're just a sequence of bytes that each bit corresponds to something in context. The type doesn't really need to hold that context. Um, so really, it's just these. If we have a different type of file, then we'll need a directory entry for a directory. So if we have a special thing for extents, we can make an extent thing. Okay, but these will be the main structures we're going to be making in this file. I don't know if file system is supposed to be one or two words, so I'm just going to have both just to make you mad. <laughs> That's all right. I don't know myself. Is it supposed to be two? Does it read better? Maybe it reads better. Okay, so we'll be making these. You know, for example, I'm just going to make them all as structs. For example... Uh, we'll need a certain size that we're doing. We can do defines or things. I'm going to have, since I don't have namespacing, I'll just prefix things with fs for this file. We'll have a block size, like a disk block. It'll be 4096 bytes, or 4k. So one disk block equals four kilobytes, same as our page size. Just to make things easier when loading and saving to disk. And I'm also going to uh, formally have the sector size, just to get rid of hard-coding numbers. The one disk sector, or LBA, is uh, 512 bytes. Okay, so just a couple things there. I'm going to have a boot block, call it boot block T, at least for this thing here. And I guess for all these I can do attribute packed. Some of them it's not going to matter, some of them it might, so I'll just do that just in case. But a boot block is one block, so it's file system block size at least. If I want to write things separately to separate sections of the boot block, it might be better to chop it up in terms of sectors, because that's ultimately what I have to read and write to the disk with. I might do that here. I'll call it sectors. I'll have a multidimensional array. We'll have eight sectors, or I could do fs block size divided by sector size, if we want to go really non-hard coding, <laughs> of, a, uh, of sectors. So however many sectors are in a block, we'll have that many sectors, which is kind of a, you know, a little bit jank, but that's all right. We'll have that there. Or if it's easier to read, you can just put eight, because that's what it's going to be. But we'll have that for a boot block. We need a super block.
which again is going to hold the overall file system metadata. I'll have an inode. I'll have stuff that goes in the inode, at least as far as extents. We'll have a special thing for that. We'll have a special thing for that, and we'll have directory entries for a directory. Those will be the main things that we need. All right, I can fill out these the rest of these structures here. So the super block again is going to be the overall metadata for our file system. So the kind of central part in that is going to be working with the inodes. So I'm going to have a total number of inodes in the file system. I'm going to have the number of bitmap, the number of blocks that a bitmap takes up. So we'll have the number of inode bitmap blocks. A little verbose. Some of these names will be, some won't. I'm not sure if I want to make, you know, some of these 16-bit or 32-bit or whatnot. I'm just doing this. Ultimately, I want this to equal like a power of two size regardless. So I'll try to work out to like 64 bytes or something for most of these, but uh, well, X10 will be smaller, but I think the super block I aim to be 64 bytes. Uh, the inode will be 64. The directory entry will probably be 64. They'll have like padding in there if we don't use everything. Uh, the super block though could be large. I mean, we'll have a full block for the super block, so it could be up to 4K in size. Just depends how much data we want to keep, you know, resident in memory and other things. But so each block is 4K. The number of bits is 4K times 8. So each block will hold 32K bits. I'm also assuming it's not going to be too far into the disk where these things happen. So we're going to have the first inode bitmap block as well as the first data bitmap block. But I'm assuming they'll be within the first, you know, 64K blocks <laughs> for each of these. So we'll, we'll find out though. But this is going to be the disk block where the inode bitmap starts and the data bitmap starts. And then we'll have a length and blocks here. So I guess I could put these first. The first block and then the length and blocks for these. And then similarly, we can do 16 or 32. I guess if these are large, we'll just make this 32. I'll have the first inode block where the inode data starts on the disk. And I'll have the first data block where the data blocks start on the disk. We can have the maximum size of a file. So we'll do max file size. This will be in bytes. So I'm 32 bit right now, still for the OS. For 64, you could increase this to 64 bit. 32 bit size max would be, you know, all Fs, right? I'm also going to have a block size and bytes. So should be FS block size. Okay, I'm going to have an inode size and bytes, but I'm planning on the inodes being a little bit on the smaller side. I know they're large in some systems. I think um, they might be large in the BSD, like FreeBSD I'm running this under. I'm not sure. I know their process struct is large. Um, on Minix, the inodes were, I think, 128 bytes. I'm going to make mine, I think, 64. So this is just going to hold the size of that if we need it somewhere for calculations or whatnot. I'm going to have the... The number of data blocks, possibly. I guess we could have number of inode blocks. Do we have that? No. Let me do that as well. That's metadata we could have. Number of inode blocks after this. First inode, first data, num inode, num data. Okay. I'm assuming these will be within 64K, but. Okay, I'll have a pointer. A root inode pointer, so we can always locate the root inode, but the Minix book didn't really explain this, or if it did, I missed what it was saying because I didn't understand it. I'm not sure if this is a pointer to the root inode in memory or as a like a disk block number, but I don't know if this is supposed to be, you know, a RAM address or disk LBA, so we'll, we'll leave that over till later, but... It's just supposed to be a constant pointer to the root inode so we can read the super block to find out if we have to like resolve paths or things. If we change a directory and it's from the root, not from the current directory, is like a relative path, then we can say, okay, we have a pointer to that inode and we can walk its file block data on disk to find the directory entries to go down, you know, each, each directory in the path that we give something like change directory or make or running a file or moving or something. I'm also going to have the number of inodes that fit within a block, just in case we need that. I'm going to have the number of direct extents per inode. 
So this should be four. For me, it's probably going to be four. Four extents directly into the inode, and then we'll have like a single indirect block for extents, maybe a double indirect block for extents as well. So to go along with that, I'll have extents per indirect block. Um, and this should be basically equated out. It'll be the block size divided by the size of an extent. That will be how many extents fit within one disk block, and that will be extents per indirect block. So a single indirect block will point to a bunch of extents. Those extents will have file data. But there will also be four direct extents within the inode directly in case the files within are not fragmented enough to go beyond that size. So we won't really we won't be using this too much, but we might go into a single indirect block eventually for something. Um, I'm not anticipating needing a double indirect block for an inode, but I might add that just for future proofing or something. I don't know. Okay, I'll also have the first free bit. I'll call it first free inode bit. So this will be the bit first zero bit in the inode bitmap. So we can have a pointer, or at least a, a number, that corresponds to the zero-based offset inside of the inode bitmap for a bit. And when we make a new file, we need to allocate an inode for it. So the first free bit in the bitmap can be the number or the ID of the inode for a new file. And then we can update it, update the first free bit after we use it for a new file by searching for the next free bit in the bitmap. But we'll do the same for data in case we need to allocate data. We can say, okay, we're looking for a range of bits for a new file. Um, depending on how many blocks it is, each block will correspond to one data bit. And if we find a range of like five bits and we need five blocks, then we can search the bitmap um, starting from the first free data bit. And if that's not enough size, we'll keep going until we allocate. And then if there's only one bit free, we'll find the first one and update this, right? But that's This is mainly going to be used when we're making a new file, possibly when we're, if a file is updated to be a smaller size as well. We might add more free bits in the bitmaps to, to recoup some earlier size. Um, I'm going to have a device number. I'm not sure why, but I put that in. I guess if we have multiple uh, storage devices later, multiple hard drives or something, and we have a file system on each one, we'll want to have a device number for mounting or other purposes later. Um, and then I'm going to have... This might be 32, actually. I'll do this. We'll have the first unreserved inode. So this might be 16 or it might be 8. I'm not, assume, I'm not going to say we're going to have a bunch of inodes. And this will mainly only be used like on first boot or before you've made a bunch of files. But a file system like in Unix or Minix, uh, I think modern Linux, has a number of reserved inodes in like the ext4 file system. Like inode 0 is used for saying it's an invalid, like a search didn't go through. So it returned a zero for a matching inode for a file. It means like the file doesn't exist, it didn't find it. So inode zero in that case would be like a reserved inode by the file system. Inode one could be, say, the root directory. We don't want to ever overwrite inode one for a root directory, so that can be reserved. We can have an inode for a bootloader that we want to always be available to be able to boot. You know, stuff like that. So you have a certain number of reserved files or reserved inodes for the system, and this would be the number after those reserved ones stating, hey, you can start putting files at this point. We could start making new inodes from this number onwards. We can have some padding bytes, or unused, I'll just call it padding. You can use it for whatever. it be 14 padding bytes, that's gonna be unused, and the size of this should be, should be thus 64 bytes. All right, extents that we use for files are just going to be very simple. The extent will be the first block on the disk where the file data is at for this particular portion of the file, this extent. Then we'll have a length in blocks. So if a file takes up four blocks in length at 16K and it starts on the disk at like block 20, first block would be 20, length would be four. You know, and then the other extents would handle the rest of the file that we have to load. Um, so this will lead to fragmentation later, of course, because not everything can be contiguously allocated on disk, like a bump allocator. You can in some situations, but not, not in a general sense. So we'll probably need some sort of defragging utility later, um, but until I figure out how to do that, I'm not going to add one. 
we just keep allocating and, and freeing stuff as we delete files. But so the inode itself, the central piece de resistance, right? Inode itself, I'm doing a subset of the Minix or Unix style ext24 or whatever file system. So I'm not going to have everything they do. I'm leaving out like user and group, you know, attributes or access flags, read, write, execute. I don't care. Like a file mode, I'm, I don't really care. I'm going to say, hey, you're a single user. You're, you're a big boy. This is your system. You can use it. And we might add it later if I want to have like a root user or something that overrides everything. But I'm just going to say right now, you can handle your own system at this point. So I'm not going to worry about that. Keep it simple. And the only sort of date time I'm going to have on a file is like the last modified time. We could have a creation time as well. I'm just going to have one overall time that is updated when a file is created and when it's updated. You know, if it's deleted, we don't have the inode. It's not going to be there, so we don't need a delete time. But we could have a delete time if we have multiple files. But I don't know. I'll think about that a bit. So I have an overall inode. And the I, an overall ID for the inode, and this will be a unique number per file. So the unique, the inode number itself. This is not a file descriptor. That's something kind of different. I'm going to have a type or a file type. And this will be, uh, I'll just call it file type. I'll have a couple different types. I can, um, I don't know if I want to make that an int or not. I could just make defines for those right now but this should probably be an enum but i'll have starting out i'm not gonna have sockets or anything i'll just have two types of files a regular one which is like a text file or a binary executable or something and i'll have a directory so a, di a directory will have different data on disk than a regular file a directory its file data will be directory entries which is going to be an id and a name file name and call it name that's fine i'm gonna have it be 60 so that the size is easy it's 64 although that wastes a lot of space <laughs> for very small named files and we can't go up to 255 in length or anything but until i get my malloc like a little less buggy and a little more robust i don't want to deal with having like a variable array and having to malloc additional space and doing things that's it's not that much extra work but it's still extra work i don't want to do right now so i'll just have a plain 60 length name, and then this will be a good even 64 bytes. So simpler implementation, but it does waste a bit of space for small named files. File allocation table, like Windows, does things a little jank in where you kind of have short and long directory entries. And the short one holds the whole name, but if the name continues past like 12 characters, however much it is, then you have additional directory entries holding different portions of the name and like flags that say this is a long directory, keep going, and it's I don't like it. It's messy. So I went with this simple Minix book implementation. This will match, actually. This will match the inode ID. So this is actually how you find an inode from a directory entry. You take the ID from the entry and you match it to the inode with that ID, and that's how you get the file data for something. You know, we have these files here. These are connected to inodes under the hood, and the, the thing knows, like, what size it is. The size in this info is contained a lot of it, if not all of it, from the inode itself. So it takes this ID, it looks it up in like an open inode table or something, or it just looks through the data blocks of the directory, and it says, hey, I have this info stored in the inode, the size of the file and the date, and it gets that from the ID in the directory entry. So that's kind of how that works. Simple enough. But okay, we're going to have the size in bytes. I'm also going to have the size in sectors, which might not need to be 32-bit, but... The size in bytes of a file, the size in sectors of a file. We could add a size in blocks, but we could also figure that out. In some situations, sectors would be easier for loading and reading. In some situations, blocks would be easier. I'm not sure. I'll go with sectors. I may change this to blocks later or add it. I don't know. Um, I added a separate field specifically for date time. This will be last modified date time. Um, this is basically going to match... I'll just put it up here. It's basically going to match the date time that I've been using inside of the pick interrupt eight for the real time clock. But I think that one is only seven bytes. So I'm going to make this one eight bytes. And I'm just making it FS date time T to differentiate. But it will be one byte for the second. 
Uh, one byte for the minutes, the hour, the day, the month, and two bytes for the year. But that makes seven bytes, which is not great, so I'm just going to have another byte of padding. So this is, you know, unused. I guess I can put that on all these. Padding is unused. That's free for use. Last modified time. This will be updated on file creation and file update. It will not be updated on file deletion, although I could update on file deletion or add a separate date for that later. I don't know. So where's the actual data for the files from the inode? Well, the direct extents per inode is this number, which we'll fill out later, but I'm just going to make it four. So we'll have extent four. And that's the actual, holds the direct, direct file extents. And we'll also have indirect file extents, at least one. So I have a single indirect block. So this will be the disk block for holding more extents. <laughs> and we might could have a double indirect block, although I don't think this would come into play because we'll have we'll have four kilobytes divided by the size of an extent, which would be eight. Yeah, 512 extents and one disk block. So if four extents can't hold it, hopefully 516 maximum extents can hold it. But if not, we can go double. And this block will hold the location of, these are four bytes each. So a double indir indirect block would point to 1,024 single indirect blocks, which, it, which would each point to 512 extents, which can have any number of blocks up to 4K, well, up to 4 gig specified here. So we, we should never need a double indirect block, I don't think, but I'll just have it there for argument's sake. Uh, with that, we'll have 4, 8, 12, this is 8, so 20, plus 32. That's 8 times 4, so that's 52, 56, 60, 61. So I think we only have 3 bytes of padding, I believe. I can't count. Can, can this thing count for me? Let's do 4, 1, 4, 4, 8, 32, 4, 4, plus... Two additions, three additions, four additions, five, six, seven, and then we'll print, and then we'll quit. 61, yeah. Good old desktop calculator, stack machines, always fun. Okay, so I think that's all we need, although I will be, I will probably put just a couple of very small helper functions into here, just because I might be calling them from the make disk file, which is outside of our OS. It builds, you know, the image for the OS, but I'll also be using this within the OS, and I could have like some helper functions used in both of those places. So I'll just have them like in here directly, but I will have a separate file for sort of an fs.c or a file system implementation that'll have actual functions to deal with um, these structures and moving files around and stuff. But that won't be in the make disk program, but I might use a couple functions also in the make disk program that I'll just include within this header, if that makes sense. But I wanna have something for just basic conversion so bytes to blocks and bytes to sectors, because that can come up when writing blocks or sectors to a disk. So let's do bytes to blocks. We'll pass in a number of bytes. And if bytes is zero, I'm just going to return zero. Else if, else if bytes is up to the block size. We'll return one. It'll be one block that we're going to allocate for all these bytes. So if we have a file that is one byte, it just has like the letter A in it, it will take up a full block on the disk ultimately. That is a waste for small files, but overall it makes it simpler. We don't really have to worry about it too much. You do see this in things like Windows, by the way. I don't have anything incriminating on here. So if I make something here... We just do an A, I'll save it to disk. It takes up one byte. It takes up zero bytes on disk. However, if we need it later, it will take up more than zero bytes on disk. It just doesn't seem like it at the moment. Because I think Windows probably um, 
queues up disk reads and writes and until it's actually needed later it's not going to get rid of it but we could have other small files over here like my to-do list it's this many bytes but it takes up the next four kilobytes on disk it doesn't take up exactly this many bytes because a disk works in terms of disk sort of sectors or clusters whatever ntfs has but it goes to the next 4k boundary is what i have set up that's why it's it that's why you have more size on disk than you do actual file size but anyway okay so if it's not zero and it's not one i'm gonna return bytes bytes divided by the block size which would get it if it divides evenly but if it doesn't divide evenly we need to add an extra size because it's an extra block because it'll be a, taking up a partial block in size Not another an inside thing here if bytes modulo block size is greater than zero then i'll add on one else we'll add zero so if we have 4096 bytes, this will be, well, it'll be one. If we have 4097 bytes, this will be one. And we'll also add another one. Otherwise, we would add zero. So if it's 8192, for example, it would be more than one, but it would be less than three. It would be two blocks ex exactly. And this would just be two plus zero because this would not be above zero for the modulo. And I'll do the same thing for sectors. We could have these just be in one generic one. That takes in another thing for the number of things to divide by, the, no the size to divide by. But I'll just have these be separate because they work a little bit differently sometimes in, a, in practice. We'll use them in different situations, rather. But these are very similar functions. I'm just replacing the macros with sector. What I could do is just replace block with sector. That's all I'm going to do there. And that is all I'm going to put in the fs.h file. So with that being said, that being filled out, I will modify make disk.c now, which will be in the build folder. Uh, build disk image for file system OS. This will be a regular C function. It will be called from the make file usually in, instead of the current add file table shell script. Add file table entry.sh, that shell script, we'll be calling this to make the disk image. We'll be replacing that. So C is cross-platform. Um, although there are some things that are not cross-platform, like reading a directory entry, which makes sense because, you know, Linux or BSD or what have you will have a different file system than Windows, unless you're using, like, FAT32 for everything. Windows nowadays has NTFS. Uh, Unix will have like ext4, btrfs, or zfs or something. So there's not really a cross-plat. There are libraries that are cross-platform for reading a directory entry, but there's not a way with a native C to do that, unfortunately. I either add another dependency or I just hard code files inside of this. Um, or maybe I can pass a list of files to this function, which I didn't do, but that seems pretty smart. I'm going to do that later, actually. Let's do that. Pass in array list whatever of files instead of hard coding because starting off i'm just going to hard code whatever files we currently have to get this going but that would be good to add later i did not do that in testing unfortunately that would be very nice to have i like things being generic okay actually there's one thing i missed that i wanted to add to the inodes that i didn't in testing so i forgot about it <laughs> but i can just go back here um, and that is a reference count. So I'll add it as like a 16 bit. We'll say, hey, you can't open more than, let's do eight actually. <laughs> You're not going to open more than 255 version of this, versions of the same file, are you? Hopefully not. But I'm going to use reference counting, which everybody loves. Nobody ever hates reference counting and likes other forms of garbage collection, but this whole OS is garbage, so you can't just collect the whole thing, right? The overall file system will have like an open file table and an open inode table, say. And entries in the open file table can point to the same inode. And also on, on the disk and the, and the directories and everything in the folders, if you have multiple copies of a file, they can each point to the underlying inode. And we can update or decrement or increment this reference count. And if we say delete a file, we would decrement the reference count. If it's zero, we can delete it from the disk. Or if it's not zero, we can keep the file data out there, but just remove it from the, the calling processes open file table or some directory that deletes it or something. 
The open file table will also have reference counts because the file descriptor returned by like fopen in a program will point to an open file table entry and that entry will point to an inode and that inode will have its own reference count because you can have multiple files open, multiple FDs, F file descriptors open for the same file. And ultimately that's kind of what these reference counts go for. I didn't have that in testing, but I kind of want to have it in the actual good implementation, good <laughs> implementation. So I'll add that here. Okay, that was it. But And here we'll be writing the actual disk. So I'll have each section that I'm going to write. And we'll write the boot block first, then we're going to write the super block, the overall file system metadata, we'll write the inode bitmap blocks, we'll write the data bitmap blocks, I guess I can put blocks. Um, we'll write the inodes itself, so inode blocks, then we'll write the data blocks. Um, okay, so we can do that. So what files are we going to write? Um, we'll have some array of files that we're just going to use here. Uh, otherwise, I would be reading a directory entry, but there's not a cross plat way to do that. On Unix, you could do like, I think include directory entry.h, and then there's functions to like read the next entry and stuff, but I'm not going to use that. It attempts to be more cross platform. This will be an array of some type. I'm going to make a special type here just to make things easier for this function, this program. And I'm going to call it file name, size, and pointer. <laughs> so it should be unambiguous what it is. Uh, put it there. Doesn't need to be packed right now. Doesn't really matter for this. But this will consist of a name, which we have a maximum of 60. We'll have a name, we'll have a size, and bytes. We'll have a pointer to it. So we'll have a file. Pointer, we'll say FP, which means we need to include standard IO. This is outside of the OS, so we don't need to only include like the double quote files. We can include the actual <laughs> host OS C library, uh, as well as standard int. Although we could use our own standard int, it wouldn't matter too much for that, actually. So I could do that. That's okay. And we will be using. Uh, the file system.h as well. Let's see if that compiles. Well, after we add this in, file name, size, pointer, files. That will equal some separate sort of objects, some structs in here. And I'm probably just going to include all the files in the current bin directory. Uh, all I have is os.bin. So if I change the make file to not delete things, Like this, I'll put down here, just comment that out. And we make it, not Mac it. We have all these. So these are the files. Well, os.bin is what I'll ultimately be making, but these are the files that I'm going to be including to be written to the disk image, not temp as well. So we'll leave out temp. os.bin can be the final image name. So everything except those two. Actually, I'll do that. Bin directory, we'll do temp .bin. for now. Okay, so we'll have stuff like, yeah, I'll just put the prefix on all of them so we can access them from this program in the build folder. That's that's fine. We'll have bootsec.bin. Um, the size will be whatever the size is. We can fill that out dynamically in this. That's fine. Bootsec.bin will get the size and we'll have a null starting off a null file pointer. So that'll be the same for all these right now. Second stage, I think that's lowercase. Third stage, we'll have the kernel, we'll have test font, term use 16 in and 18 in. Calculator and editor, I might put the kernel last. Yeah, I'll put the kernel last, that's fine. I say it's fine, it might not be. It might be subtle bugs later. Those three were malloc test as well. Kernel, I'm not gonna be doing the file table. That will be replaced by our file system implementation. Kernel malloc test, so that should be it, okay. 
we'll be changing the data within this, so I won't do constant. Um, but I will do a constant number that we're going to do. Well, we can do 32. And that will be the size of file since it's compile time and it's in the same scope, we can access that at compile time. Size of files divided by the first entry in the array. And I'll get the number, which should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It should be 10. We want to write the boot block first, so we'll do that. And boot block has boot block T as the type, call it boot block. We just say it's zero right now. And that includes a number of sectors, right? So sectors, although I might just call that sector singular. I think that would be better. For me, indexing these things makes more sense. It reads better if I say sector zero. I think it reads better to say sector zero. So that's why I do that. So the first sector of the boot block needs to be the boot sector. So to access the boot sector, I'll probably need a pointer to it. So I'm going to get pointers to all these first before I do anything. I think that would make sense. Let's fill out files info. Uh, so I have i equals zero. Let's get the file. Well, actually we have that in here, don't we? So files i.fp, so the file pointer in there. F open uh, the file name, so files i dot name, and we'll do read binary. That could say, I don't know if binary matters for this, but I'll just include that anyway. So we're ensuring we're not dealing with CRLF conversions or any other crap. We're just saying, hey, one byte is going to be one byte. Don't convert things. Although I think in BSD land and other places, this really doesn't matter. So we can get the size given that. Uh, you could call like fstat and fill out a file stat structure and get the size from there, or you can seek uh, seek the file from seek end, and we will be implementing these ourselves later, which will be fun. But this basically says go to the end of the file <laughs> in the open file table. It'll have a position or an offset and an address where the file is at. This is how I'm going to do it later, at least. And we can update the position of the file to the size of the file in bytes, starting if it's loaded to an address. So if the file is 300 bytes, we'll go to position 300 offset from you know the starting address, or 299 off by one, whatever. Um, and basically, the, this is the wince value. Seek, seek set is the beginning of the file, so offset zero. Uh, seek current is wherever the file position currently is at, and seek end is from the end of the file. And what you do is add on an offset to that position. So in this case, the offset is zero. We'll be going to the end of the file, adding an offset of zero, which will leave the position for the file at it, its size. So then if we do ftl to return the position of the file, that will be effectively the size of the file. So that's how we get the size. So this will be get file pointer. This will be get file size. We're not going to close it, although we could, no, yeah, we're not going to close the file. We'll do that later. So I could close the file later for cleanup, even though the OS should handle it. Uh, we'll just make sure it, it works out. Uh, this will be right before we exit. So I'm just going to call fclose on files i.fp, yeah. That's a one-liner, so that's fine. We'll do that. Okay. So assuming we got the size and everything for the files all right, and what I could do is try to compile this. Just want one set and see what happens. So we'll do make this.c, make disk. It will need the include. That should be all we need. Uh, it is not fp. It is files i.fp. That's true. Okay, well that made it all right. That's good. All right. So that means the definitions in fs.h were correct because that's included. So that's it. That is good. Just making sure. So I want to fill out the first sector of our boot block with the boot sector data, which conveniently is at files offset zero, which we'll say is a sector. That's how big it should be. We want to fill out one member of fs sector size and it needs to come from files 0.fp. That is the boot sector. I want to read that, 
And to make sure it works, I'm going to put some asserts in here, which means I need to have assert, which is a macro, but we'll have that in there. And I'm going to assert that equals one. So we want to be able to read one object of one sector into the boot block. So I can make sure that works right quick. Um, assertion failed. So that's good. That means it did not work. <laughs> so that should equal one, right? The number of objects. I usually get these things confused. So then the number of members. So F read return value should be the number of objects read or written. Okay. Um, oh, and that is because, yes, since we, we seeked, that's the word, right? We, we suck. We seeked. Soak. <laughs> to the end. I don't know the past tense. I guess seeked to the end of the file. That means the file position indicator is still at the end of the file. So I need to actually rewind this so it goes to the start of the file. And rewinding um, is just syntax sugar for fseek zero set, seek set. So it goes to the start of the file and adds an offset of zero. Ends up pointing to the start of the file. Um, but rewind is just shorthand for that. So I'll call that. Rewind does not have a return value either. but. So if we go to the start of the file, and then we try to read a sector, it should read it. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't read a sector if the file isn't that big. There's nothing more to read, and that's why it wasn't returning a correct value. I believe... Yeah, so now it works. Okay. So we haven't written anything yet. Um, if I want to write to a file, I guess I'll do that here. I'll make constant. We'll say image name. It'll be a constant. This will be a character. We have the os.bin, and while I'm testing this, I don't want to overwrite that. So temporarily, I'll name this something else. I'll name it testImage.bin. So let's just write one sector first. So let's f write the boot block sector zero, fs sector size one. Uh, we need a file pointer for that, actually. Uh, this will be image pointer. This will be f open image name wb. We'll do that. And I don't want that to change, so we'll do that. Okay. So we'll write that to image pointer. Again, assert that it works. And that does not work. I spell sector? Oh yeah, Sec sector. Like the enemy in Mortal Kombat. Except not really. Constant struct, I can't pass it as a constant. Alright, well, you're just lame today, aren't you? Yes, yes you are. That's alright. So we made it. What do we make? Well, that will be in the current directory as well. I kind of want to put that in the bin directory, but that's okay. That's in the current directory. And <laughs> we have a core dump. I'll have to get rid of that. Uh, but that is okay. Test image, 512 bytes. It should be the same as the boot sector. And remove the core ones right now. So XXD should only be 512 bytes, but I'll just say the length is 512. Give it test image .bin. So This is the boot sector, and I know that because that's one of the only things that'll end in 55AA. And we have these things here, which is in the boot sector. So that looks to be okay at first glance. So the first sector, the boot block, will be the boot sector. Sectors 1 through 7. If it's zero based, two through eight, if it's one based, will be the boot loader if we want to have stuff. I'm going to put the second stage in there. The third stage boot loader written in C, I'm going to put at a reserved inode in the file system. And I will load that inode and its file data, probably from the boot sector. I'll change how that is a bit. The second, se the second stage won't have to change. Uh, we'll still jump to the third stage, but it will be loaded from the inode in the file system from the boot sector. And then third stage will load the kernel from the file system and jump to it. Booting will change a bit in, in a while, but right now that's, that's my plan. So we wrote sector zero, we need to write sectors one through seven. I'll just do this for you and eight, uh, I equals zero, I less than. We'll do eight right now, or we can do FS block size divided by sector size, <laughs> which will be eight. I want to write sector i. So we'll write all the sectors eventually right there. And that'll equate to 4096 because it'll be one block. Do this boot sector. 
Second stage bootloader. Oh, I need to write, we'll say I, we'll do I again. But instead of this, we'll do less than this. I'm trying to not hard code, even though it makes it probably worse readability. Sorry about that. But we'll do minus one because we only have seven sectors to go instead of eight for this, or one less than the block size. That's how much space we have left for the second stage bootloader. Um, I want to read into sector I. Actually, we'll start at one and we'll go until seven. Yes, I want to read in sector I. One, file zero. Yes, I think that'll work. Except this will be files one because conveniently we made second stage as the second one in there. So I did this for a reason. <laughs> Third stage will be two, but. And that should do that, and then we will write the data to disk. So we should end up with the second stage starting at sector 1, going to sector 7 approximately, or less, if it doesn't take up that much space. Um, assertion failed. Nice. The file might not be that big to begin with. Ooh, that's true. That's true. Uh, okay, we can we can change that then. We'll do files one dot size. This is why we had that bytes to sectors. Let's do that. That would make this easier. Let's do bytes. Even though we'll compute this every time in the loop, and that's not great. That's okay right now. We'll change that later. Maybe bytes to sectors given files i dot size i plus plus. We can't write more than the data that the file contains. So that is okay. And I'll just have a check here. If i is greater than seven, we can't do it. Yeah, if i is greater than seven, we'll make f print f. This won't be files i, this will be files one. That would be a bad error. Okay, percent s is too large. Maximum size for boot block seven sectors for this file and it will be files one dot name okay and then we can return we'll return exit failure well, i could call exit with one or something but i like putting exit failure i think that's fun to do and that is in standard live usually those are defined in otherwise we'll read which means i need this There we go, okay. So now our test image should be at 4096 for writing the whole block up here. And we should be able to look at the second part of that block, just to check, I can make it 1024. We'll seek to 512 to skip the boot sector and I don't have anything there. So never mind. <laughs> Is it only one sector? Um, is there anything written to it? Oh, we have the boot sector. So we don't have anything past the boot sector. That's not great. Okay, guys, I'm pretty dumb. You know this, right? Need to hydrate more to keep my smarts up. You know, up here, we're getting, we're getting FTEL. FTEL is the size of the file, but I'm not putting that anywhere. For all I know, it could be zero. And it is still zero. I need to put that somewhere. That's the whole point of me making this size thing right here. So I need to add... Uh, the size is FTEL, otherwise that stays at zero and there's no point in doing this. <laughs> you can, if you read zero bytes, it returns a success, it just doesn't do anything. So, yeah. Now it should actually read in the bytes according to the size that it gets, and then it'll write, write it out. Simple mistakes. At least they're simple and not like bad mistakes, right? They're just kind of, what am I doing? So, let's do XXD, let's look at um, test image. Offsetting from 512, now we actually have data. So that's good. 2048 was the size of that file right now, so I can look at 2048. At the end, there's nothing, so never mind. But we do get all the way up to VBE2. And we get all the stuff. These are the final um, like variables in the file. I guess everything else would be blank because it's filled out later, so that does make sense. But we do have sections laid off for the VBE data to fill in in the second stage. So that should be okay, hopefully, ultimately. But that actually reads and writes to the file now, so that's good. Um, but okay, that's all it is for the boot block.
Then we'll do the super block. So super block T, super block. Again, we'll do this. And I don't remember what all is in there, so it's all of this stuff. So some of these we will have to calculate from the values of the other ones, or else I could just, you know, put it all in a, a designated initializer thing. And that would be nice, but I can't do that because some of these need to be calculated, so. Um, let's replace all of this. Super block dot. And we'll do that and that. Okay, so the number of inodes, I don't, we'll, this will be at least the number of files. I don't, I don't know how many inodes we want to have ultimately. Because that determines how many inode blocks we have. What we could do is update that uh, later on within the kernel anyway, and we could just start this off as the current number of inodes that exist in the system. I guess that would be a better way to do it, right? That way we don't have to worry about having a maximum size when we actually make the, the disk image. We can update that as we go along to the current number of files in the OS. So I'll make this number the number of files that we have, which is this constant value here. The number of files we have, and we'll add a couple. Didn't want to do that. Number of files. Add that back. Plus, um, I did plus two. Okay, because the number of inodes will be for more than just those number of files. The number of inodes I'm doing plus two because we'll have an invalid inode, which will be inode zero. So I'll say invalid inode zero. And the root directory. So starting off, we'll have the root directory. If we have other directories, I'll add more files for that. But starting off, I'm just having one similar to the flat file that we currently have in the OS, uh, just one directory. For the root directory, we'll start off in. That will take its own inode. The root directory will have its own inode. And then in addition to those two, we'll have these files. Starting off, we'll have that number of inodes, that number of files uh, on the disk image in, in the OS. Okay, so the first inode bitmap block is going to be two. Yeah, since block zero will be the boot block. Block one will be the super block. Right after that, we want to put, this will be zero based. Right after that, we want to put the bitmap block. So that'll work. Close that out. I'll uh, just have that lined up so it looks a little bit better. I'll be doing these out of order as well. So the number of inode bitmap blocks will equal... Um, I have some calculations for this. So the number of files divided by... Yeah, number of files divided by the block size times 8. So the number of bits in a block will be the block size times 8 because it's the number of bytes in a block. Okay. So the number of files divided by the number of bits in a block, and we'll add the number of files modulo the number of bits in a block. And if that's above zero, then we'll add one, else we'll do zero. One, else zero. This goes there. Okay. That'll be the number of blocks we need for the inode bitmaps. So if we have right now 12 files divided by the number of bits in a block will be zero, but it will have at least one block because 12 is above zero, right? So we'll have right now just one block for the bitmap, but that'll increase later. We could make this larger so we have room to grow, but I guess until we have 32K files, we don't need to increase this. Yeah, since one block is 4,096 bytes, and we have 8 bits per byte, 4,096 times 8 is 32,768. That's how many files we can have. That's how many bits we can have in one block. So I'll just keep it there for now, but this will most likely have to increase later if we have a bunch of files later. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. First data bitmap block will be after these, so it would be the first inode bitmap block plus the number of inode bitmap blocks. Uh, which will be super block. So if the first block is two and this is one, this will be at three because it's zero based indexing for the number of disk blocks here. So this will start at block three. Rem remember also, just for my own sake, a block is 4,096 bytes. So if you want to load a disk sector, 
or a certain number of sectors from the disk according to a certain block, you will have to multiply that block number by eight, or the number of sectors in a block. So if I want to load the bitmap, the data bitmap to disk, and it's at block three, I'll have to load from disk starting at sector eight, um, three times eight, the block number times eight to convert to the number of sectors. And that will be the LBA offset in the actual disk that this would be located at. That's something you have to keep in mind. Um, the number of data bitmap blocks will be determined by the number of data bits. So I'm just gonna have a little thing for that. Let's count 32 maybe. Number of data bits. So to get the number of data bits, I needed the number of data blocks, which I don't have. So let me get that as well. I need a disk size, which I don't have. This is stuff I had when I made this in testing. So I can assume a default disk size right now, unless the user passes in a different one. I'll make that another item up here. Pass in user input disk size or default value from make file. Don't hard code 1.44 meg. Okay, but we'll start with the floppy size 1.44 meg. That's what we're currently using anyway, so that's fine. Um, fine. <laughs> Whatever your definition of that is. Okay. So I'll do constant disk size. And that will be 0.44 meg, which will equate to, I think it's 512, it's 2,880 sectors, is what that equals. So that's what we'll have. So that disk size divided by the block size, or rather, bytes to blocks of the disk size, be data blocks right now, and then the number of data bits would be the data blocks minus uh, the first data bitmap block. So that's how many blocks of file data we have. And then we subtract this three to not count all the stuff that's on the disk before this point. I think, I don't remember exactly why I did that, unfortunately, but I think that's why I subtracted that from there. That's the number of bits we're going to have. Oh, because, the, yeah, the, the whole file size, if, if our whole disk image was only for file data, then the number of data bits would be the number of blocks we could have in the whole image. But we can only have a certain number of data blocks in the image because the boot block takes up a block. That would be one potential bit. The super block takes up a block. The inodes take up blocks, you know. So we have to subtract those out. Um, which just so happens to start being counted from the data bitmap block. So these are the number of bits that will be contained within the data bitmap block. I think it will be slightly less. We'll also, we should also subtract the number of blocks taken up by the data bitmap block. I did not count on that when I was doing this before. Um, also subtract blocks taken by data bitmap. So when I figure that out, I'll, I'll add that on there, but <laughs> number of data bitmap blocks, which is what we're trying to get here, will be the number of data bits um, subtracted by the number of bits in a block, block size by by eight. That's how many blocks to start off, plus an extra block if there's a partial number of bits. So again, number of data bits modulo, block size, Modulo block size by eight, greater than zero, one, else zero. Which it should also just be one. I'm not sure I can subtract this if I need this value to get this, so maybe this doesn't matter. If it matters, we'll add it later, that's fine. Or does not matter. All right, I don't know enough math right now to do that. I haven't had enough coffee today, <laughs> so that's okay. Um, okay, so the first inode block will be after the data bitmap, so it will be the first data bitmap block plus uh, the number of data bitmap blocks. That's where this will start on the disk. 
the first data block starts after the number of inode blocks, so we should calculate that first. Okay, so I got this as bytes to blocks. Um, num inodes times the size times the size of an inode. Right, that should be the number of blocks that the inodes take up. Yeah, this many inodes, and each inode is the size. That's how many bytes all of the inodes take up. And then we'll convert the number of bytes to the number of blocks, and that will be the number of blocks. Okay, and the first data block will be... <laughs> It's similar to the the above things, the first inode block plus the number of inode blocks. They kind of all feed off each other here. Um, the number of data blocks currently taken up in the file system will be just the number of file blocks, which I got somewhere else. Okay, I had a running total, so let me add that in here. So a running total of how many blocks these files take up. That's how many blocks are going to be on the disk. Well, partly how many blocks are going to be on the disk. Um, I'll have a running total here. So we'll do file blocks plus equal bytes to blocks of the file size. Files I dot size. Okay. We'll rewind it. So if we have the number of bytes taken up by all the number of blocks rather taken up by all the files, that can be this. But we'll also have at least one block right now for the directory entry. And that should be it. For the root directory. Because the root directory has directory entries, and those directory entries are the file data for a file type directory file in the inode. That's why I'm going to add one there. Uh, the max file size in bytes is that, or I think you can do negative one, but it's unsigned, so that's eh, whatever. That's the max 32-bit file size. A block size in bytes is going to be the block size. Okay, the inode size in bytes is going to be a size of an inode, simple enough. The root inode pointer I can fill out at runtime from the kernel. Build at runtime from kernel. Or however I decide to do it, or third stage bootloader. The inodes per block will be the block size divided by size of inode. Uh, direct extents for inode is four. Extents per indirect block will be, since I already wrote that there, size of the block divided by size of an extent, which is eight bytes. So this should be, uh, should be 512. Just line all these up. The first free bit in the inode bitmap will be the number of inodes which is simple enough, because it's zero-based. So inode zero will be an invalid inode, and then we'll have uh, the files take up their inodes, the root directory take up its inode, um, the bootloader will be included in the files. So yeah, that would be the first free bit, I believe. But we might have different calculations for that later. That looks slightly better, but not really, but that's fine. <laughs> first free data bit. Uh, will be the number of blocks in the file plus one. So the files all take up their file blocks worth of data. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be one for the root directory. Plus one, well. Plus one for root directory, yes. Okay. And I think the number of inodes includes that for the root directory. Yeah, so that's why we don't add one there, because we already do it in the number of inodes. Yeah, so I think that's, I think that's right. Device number, I'm going to start off at 1, even though I'm not really going to use it. I'll start it off at 1. First unreserved inode, I think I'll make 3. So we'll have inode 0 will be uh, invalid. Inode 1, I'm just going to make 1 be the root directory, and I'll make 2 be the bootloader inode. So 
It'll be third stage. I know it's going off the screen probably. So that should fill out the bootloader, so we'll write that to disk. However, or sorry, the super block, we'll write the super block to disk. However, the super block is only going to be about 64 bytes in size, and we want to write a full block of data. So I will write that first, though. We'll assert f write super block. We'll write uh, size of super block t. We'll write one of those um, to the image pointer. We'll assert that that equals the size of super block t. But other than that, we still have, you know, block size minus 64 or 4032, I think, bytes. We'll still have that many bytes to write to the, to write for the rest of the block. And I'm going to make a little helper function to give us the number of bytes we need. I'm going to call it number of padding bytes or something. Bad name, but that's fine. Number of padding bytes to get to the next specified size of something. So we'll take in a number of bytes. And we'll take in a sort of boundary that we want to go to. So if we have a file that's 500 bytes and we want to go to the we want the number of bytes to write out to a block, we would ultimately need you know 4096 minus 500. But I want to get that programmatically so I don't have to calculate things. We'll say if bytes is zero, we don't need any bytes to go to the next boundary, but let's do if bytes mod boundary is zero, then we can return zero. We don't need to go any farther, else we can return. Uh, this is the same stuff that I did within the make file to get the next size. I did the original size minus the size modulo whatever boundary the next thing we want to get to. So 500 total bytes is, is for a sector. So the number of bytes to go to the next sector is what this is calculating. Um, so I'm just doing that for a generic number of bytes here. So bytes minus bytes mod, say boundary, plus the boundary, and then minus bytes, because that is where we get new size over here. We subtract that size to get the ultimate value of number of bytes to pad this out to the next sector. I'm just doing that for a generic boundary. And that should work. But I can test it works if we do like, you know, 64 bytes. We want to get the number of bytes to go to 4096. So we'll do that. I have to escape this. Otherwise, percent and vim is the whole file. I don't want to do that. Take the boundary and add it, and then take the bytes and minus. We can do that in either order, I think, but maybe not. Take the bytes and minus. So print that and quit. That's a bad character. Oh, because I put bytes, not the number. Oh, uh, I, I mean what I say, but I don't type what I mean. So, I mean, for this calculation, you don't need anything like, like that advanced. But if, if the file is greater than, you know, the number of the boundary, if the file is like 5,000, you want the number to go to 8192, and this would be eventually equal to 3192. So, um, but that's all right. That, that gets you the number of padding bytes to go out. So I will use that down here to add out to end of block. We can do f write um, from something. The number of padding bytes from the size of super block t up to the block size. Write one of those, I guess. I want to assert that equals. I need to write to image pointer as well. I want to assert that equals one. Oh, because I have question marks here and it's like, that's a digraph, yeah. But I want to put something in to write from. I'm going to make like a blank block, basically, a blank sector. I'll put null, a null sector, and this will be an FS block size number of bytes. It'll just all be zeros. So we can use it just to write zeros and stuff. It could be writing from dev null as well, but I don't think Windows has dev null. So I want this to be cross-plat a little bit later on. Uh, so I'll do that. We'll write from the null block. Call it null block, right? Call it null sector. No, call it null block because it's a block. Okay, so basically write zeros to pad out to the end of the block, right? So 
this is where, you know, it's getting hairy and I should probably separate these things into their own functions. And I might do that here soon. But we can check by calculating this. Or just running it. Uh, super, not super. I don't have super dot. Oh, that makes any... There we go. Super dot. Have to escape it. One oh seven. Is that what I just did? Need a comma there. <laughs> there we go. Oh, assertion failed. One oh five. Did not write the size of super block t. No, it needs to write one because I put it writing one object. That was the whole point, making things simple, dude. Come on. Come on, self. What are you doing? So test image should be 8192. There we go. And it'll write the super block data after the second stage data. I guess it makes a core dump when the assertion fails. That's great. That's fine. We can check that though. It's only 64 bytes, but we'll offset by the first block, which would be 4096. Yeah. Because this will be the second block on the disk. So we have some data in there. It doesn't look like much, but we have some data in there. And that data should correspond to the super block. We have all the Fs for the file size. <laughs> so we know that's in the middle. First thing is C, uh, which is correct because the number of inodes is 10 plus 2, which is 12, which is C. So that looks to be correct. And it should end in a 3. And it ends on a 3. Yeah, so that looks right. Okay. Okay, but I'm going to think a little bit and probably separate these out into like helper functions to write the boot block and then the super block. So I'm going to think on that just for a second and take a little break and I'll be back. Okay, let's try to maybe make it read a little bit better. Maybe not. I'm not sure. I'll have to add global variables and things, but I do kind of want to maybe have different sections for these, like the boot block, super block and things, different little helper functions. Just do like void or something. That's fine. We'll do write. Boot block, boot block. Maybe I'll just make them void and just, uh, you know, we'll do stuff like this. Not the best solution, but that is all right. So like the boot block, we'll have this stuff. We'll do right, boot block. Not passing anything in, so we'll see what all we need ultimately this stuff. I want to write to the disk image. And small things for that. Um, so what do I need up here? I need the image pointer at least, the image name. I'll need files. So image name is constant. That is all right. This stuff we can move. Num files and files we probably need up there. Or I can have this be, I don't think I can do this globally because this is runtime dependent, right? I'm not sure that'll work. No block I can put up there. Image pointer, like these things I can put up there. I don't think I can put files up there. I might have to pass that in. I'm not sure. We'll find out. I mean, it is constant. Technically, this stuff is all available at compile time that I'm giving it, so that I think that would be all right. And this would be constant as well, technically. I'm not sure. It might be runtime dependent. But I kind of want these things to be easier. Main should read, like, a lot easier than this. So this is how I want main to read, right? Not like the other way. But this will fill out files info, and that's global. That's okay. Right, super block. We'll do that. Grab all of that. Put her in there. Okay. All right, that probably doesn't work, but we'll find out. And it doesn't. Initializer element is not a compile time constant because we do f open. 
And that should not return a value. Uh, okay. We'll do this. That'll be fine. We'll make them Boolean. Which means we need standard bool, which I could add my own or I could just use theirs. It's fine. Use the OS's stuff. So this is true, this doesn't work. So I can put this down in main though. Pointer to output image. And this will just be zero. Envoy does not return a value in all control paths, 6198. It's right block. Oh, we'll return true. Success. Otherwise, exit failure will technically be true. We'll return false. Right super block. Uh, return true. Okay, that seems to work. I thought that would be a lot worse than it was, actually. <laughs> that is all right. So it's still 8192. I don't know where that XXD, there it is. We still wrote that, okay. Seems to be all right, that, that's good. Just make things global, which is not great, but this is a lot easier to read for main, I think. We'll have similar ones for these. Even though they're gonna be, these bitmap block ones will be small and pretty similar, but that's that's fine. Um, turn, exit. We'll do it this way. Right, inode blocks and right data blocks. Okay, and then we'll do file cleanup for all those, which we need to do cleanup even if we don't do all this stuff. So, I mean, this is just if we get to this point, I mean, the OS will clean it up, right? But I, I, ideally I would call this if one of these failed. So that's not great. Of course, a good way to do that is having a label and doing a go-to, but people don't like that, right? Even though it doesn't matter, that's fine. We'll just leave it like this, that's, that's fine, I worry too much. So I need inode bitmap, bitmap blocks. Okay, so for the inode bitmap blocks, we want to write uh, a full block. I mean, it's only going to be one block in size, but we want to write bits set for every file that has an inode, every inode that's currently in use. We want each bit for each inode to be set to one in this bitmap block. Um, so what I'm going to do is have a sector, I'll call it temp maybe. I'll have a temp sector, just fs sector size that we can use to write to and I will say the first byte of the sector, I can do it one of two ways. I can do it this way and like set each byte, or I can set like an int pointer and set an int at a time, you know, 32 bits at a time, whatever. To do this, and this would be um, bits 0 to 7, and bits 8 to 10. Zero based bits from the start of this sort of sector of data, if we want to set the bits in. So how many inodes are we going to have? We're going to have 12, right? Num inodes. But really we should get it from the super block, which would mean that would have to be global, which is not great, but I could do that. I don't really, well, I could pass it in, but nah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll do that. be the number of inodes is how many inode bits we want to set. So super block, num inodes. So a way to do this without setting all these bits every time is I'm going to um, have a chunk of memory, we'll say 32 bits, 
And we'll say right now we have less than 32 files, so this is okay. Later on we'll have a loop and go through every 32 files, I guess, or however much chunk of bits you want to set at a time. But we'll say we only have up to 32 files at the moment, so that's okay. So I'll get a pointer, the temp sector, um, say bit, bit chunk or something. <laughs> that's fine. We'll get a pointer to the start of the sector. And we want to set the number of bits according to the I node. So I can do this by by knowing that from sort of bit arithmetic, bit flipping, bit setting, and stuff. And that if you have two to the number of bits that you want to set, minus one, that equals the number of bits set and like a number. So what I mean by that is if we have if we want to set number of I nodes here, which is 12. Um, we can say, toot, I don't know if I can do power within DC. I don't know how to do that, actually. Is there a power argument in here? Oh, hat. Okay, top two values are pop. The second is raised to the power of the first. Scale of the result is equal to scale. The second is raised to the power of the first. Interesting. I put the exponent first, is what that means. So if I do 2 and 3, that would be 3 squared, which should be 9. No, that's 2 raised to 3. Okay, so if I do 3, 2, that should be 9. Okay. If we say number of bits would be 12, so I want 2 raised to 12, and then we'll subtract 1. That's going to be 4,095. That's a number that contains the number of bits that are set that we want to manipulate at one time. It might make more sense if I open, like, a regular calculator here. If we have 12 bits that we want set, um, 4,095 will have 12 ones, 12 bits. But you can, you can get to that number by saying the number of bits you want set, you raise to the power of 2. Raise, raise 2 to the power of the number of bits you want set, which I can't do within here. Well, I guess I can shift, uh, shift left by 12. No, shift left by minus 1, shift left by 11. Okay, and we subtract 1, and we get 12 bits we want set. So you can do this, or you can do 2 shift left by num bits, minus 1, minus 1. <laughs> Two different ways of getting, getting a number that has the number of bits in 1s, a sort of bit mask. I'm going to set by oring this chunk, or I can just set this directly. That might be better. I don't know. I can set this directly. That's fine. Later on, we'll, we can use a separate uh, variable for it, but we don't have exponentiation natively in C, so I have to do something like pow, or I can do the, the left shift thing. Let me make sure with another test case. If we have, should already be open. I have two open. If we wanted to set 6 bits, let's just check that it works. 2 shift left, 6 minus 1 is 5. And let's subtract 1. We get 6 bits set. So yeah, that seems to be alright. So, the number of bits I want set is the number of inodes. For block, number of inodes minus 1, minus 1. And also, this only works if, you know, that, that number fits within 32 bits here. If it was higher, then we would have to sort of modulo by 32 and only set 32 bits at a time and you know keep chunking it off like that but right now it's under or up to 32 bits and this is this is fine so we can just set that number here set number of bits equal to number of inodes so that's the number in the sector and then i'll write that to disk so assert f right Temp sector. I could just call it sector, I guess. It doesn't matter. That'd be a little bit less typing. Temp sector, sector size. One. Do image pointer. Assert that equals one. And that would just be one sector written to disk. But I'll just see if that compiles first. And it doesn't, because I'm bad at my job. That has lower precedence. Wow, see, you're a wonderful language, aren't you?
Wonderful language. Implicit declaration. Yes, that is true. Okay. Uh, okay, so that will write one sector, but I want to write one block. So we can do number of padding bytes to pad out to the end of the block. According to however many sectors we wrote, I guess. Right now it's just one sector, so that's fine. Insert null block, num padding bytes from a sector size up until the block size, one equals one from the image pointer. Okay, that should be all right. HL, do this. The test image is 12288 and that is 8196 plus 4096, so that is correct. Okay, and we'll do a similar thing sort of for the data bitmap. Let's do data bitmap blocks and I'll unlock this or uncomment that. We could have sector also just be a global, but then we would have to clear it after we write to it. So I don't know. This is more stuff on the stack, but I don't, it's fine. Okay, so the number of data bits will correspond, will correspond with the number of data blocks that is set. This will be num, is it called num data blocks? Yes. Uh, blocks. Okay, but that might be over 32. So I will want to do this probably in chunks for this one. I don't know if I need that. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll do divided by 32. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll get all the full chunks, and then we'll do a partial chunk after, which we'll just be doing this, um, according to however many bits we have left. So, okay. Now we can do this. We'll say bit chunk will equal this. Start at the start of the sector. That's just one sector at a time. So eventually we need another loop to go through multiple sectors depending on the data, or you can just overwrite the sector and write it to the image. That might be easier. But that is all right. It's the first time I'm doing this, so hopefully it's okay logic, but <laughs> I want to set this 32 bits, right, for this. Let's, let's do this as well. And I can make this a while loop, maybe while total blocks probably greater than zero or equals zero. Or we could start it at zero. It'd have to be an int though if we did that. Then we do something like this. We set the bit chunk. This would not be good. We'd do 32 minus one probably, because 32 is the max we can do. But that is a big number, right? I mean, it is a big number. Right, that's the four gig limit, effectively. And then we would subtract one, which would be all, all these bits set, <laughs> 32 bits set. New divided by 32. Might work. We'll do this. Divided by 32. We'll do 32 bits at a time. Set 32 bits at a time. This will be within the sector, and then since bit chunk is 32, we can increment that. That will increment by four bytes each time from pointer arithmetic. And then after that, we will have something that is a partial amount 
of that many. But maybe while well, it's greater than one, while well, it's greater than zero. So 32 would be one. 31 would be zero. So then we want to get the partial. Of less than 32 bits. Should be doing like this. Which would just be modulo 32. It would be this modulo 32, I believe. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. Do modulo 32 minus 1. Minus one, we'd set that. I guess we don't need a sector if we're only setting four bytes at a time and we could just keep track of how many bytes we've written and we wouldn't have to deal with an extra sector. This is kind of awkward, not that I know what I'm doing, but maybe we could do that. I could do this. Well, if this is a pointer, then it needs to be that. But if this was just a number, then we could just set the number. And it would be, you know, size of bit chunk, one, image pointer. Let me keep a running total here. Okay. And then we would write from no block. We want to pad out to the end of the block here. We do padding bytes from bytes written to block size. That should write at least one block. Four bytes at a time, according to setting the number of bits within those four bytes. Hopefully that works. It's kind of jank, so probably have a bunch of errors. Yeah, yeah, always have a bunch of errors. Sign shift result requires 34 bits, but it only has 32 because it has overflow. That is true. 2 to the 31 doesn't... Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Hmm. I can just make it equal to... Don't even, don't even worry about it. It's easier, easy enough. Why would it need to return? Oh, because the while doesn't have a... Oh, that's where all those errors came from. Okay. That compiled, right? Yeah. And 16384. So if we go 12288, we should see at least one byte written, hopefully. 512 dash s 12288 test image we have 15 bits and then we have three bits and four bits so 15 and 7 is 22 is that correct i mean it's probably correct if we take um, second stage dot bin would be one block because a block is 4,096 bytes. So this should be one block. This would be two blocks. That's three. Uh, this would be one. Oh, boot sec doesn't need, you know what? You know, I don't, I don't have to worry about that. I can look at file blocks here. We don't need to worry about that. Total file blocks, percent, whatever that is, a D. So this should be how much data is on the disk. So the, the bit number will be at least this many data bits. 
It might be more. I'm not sure. 22. Okay, now that matches. So 22 bits were written, 15 plus 7, 15 plus 3 plus 4, so that is correct. That is correct, which is awesome, because I didn't think that would work. That was the first time I did that, so I feel, um, I guess say proud, just difficult, I guess. But if this number is ever 31, and it could be, isn't that still going to be above the 32-bit limit, like it said? I mean, it's above 32-bit. I can make it long. I can make it 64. Like, that's okay. I have to only write four bytes at a time, so I'll do four. And this one, we won't do size a bit chunk, we'll do four. Okay, that's fine. That way we won't, we won't have an issue at runtime later down the line uh, from that happening. And we still have 22 written, so that's good. Okay. What else do we need? The inode blocks and the data blocks. Okay. Okay, we'll write these. Let me just get rid of everything within here, so... Eh, whatever. I was, I was trying to figure out a Vim keybind to delete all this at once, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. There probably is one. So inode 0 is going to be the invalid inode, but it will still exist in the inode blocks, I guess. Yeah, it will. I'm going to have an inode T, inode. Right now it'll just be 0. And we can just write that because it will be 0. This is a struct, actually. Let's do that. We'll F write data at the inode or the size of an inode T, or we can do size of inode because it's not a pointer. One to image pointer equals one. Inode one will be, I'm going to make that the root directory. We'll set the ID to one. Okay, I'm going to have a running total, actually, so let's do this. Inode ID. can do that here, that's fine, equals 1. This will be inode ID. Because I'm going to increment this number for all the files as we run through and write inodes. So right now I'll just have that be equal to 1, that's fine. Actually, I could do that later and have it equal to 2, that would make more sense anyway. Getting ahead of myself, alright, we'll just make this 1. Hard code it. So the type is going to be file type directory. Uh, we might could do this in a designated initializer, actually. Although I already did this up here. Um, we could we could do that. We can do inode equals inode t. ID equals one. Type equals file type directory. Size bytes. For the root directory will be however many directory entries we'll have, and we'll have one per file. So we'll have directory entry t times however many files we have. So it's num files. Uh, the size and sectors will be the inode size and bytes. I think I can do this. Bytes and sector, bytes to sectors by the inode size and bytes. Last changed date time. I could call it timestamp as well instead of date time. The timestamp make more sense. That's kind of what I'm used to at work in other places. Where's the inode in here? Inode T. Let's do last modified timestamp. I hate that when I go back and forward by word, it doesn't stop on the underscore. It makes me mad. I wonder if that's a setting I can change in, in VimRC or something. The last change timestamp I will make... Um, uh, 
we'll do 1337. <laughs> we'll do military time. I'm doing 24 hour clock. Second can't go over 60, unfortunately. I'll just do zero. We'll do 420. <laughs> Why not? Year will be whatever our current year is. That's that's fine. I don't know if I have to do this, but I'll do this here. Since it's already within one, I don't know if I have to specify that again, but that's I'll just do that. That's fine. Um, extent zero. I think I do have to do it like this, but then T will do first block. So the first the first data block on the disk I'm going to have be for the root directory. I'm not going to have an empty block for the invalid inode, although I could. I don't know if that would be easy or not, but I'm going to say right now the first data block is going to be the first data on the disk is going to be for the root directory entries. So it's going to be the first um, data block on the disk to have that available from the super block. The root directory will be first data on disk, not first data, first uh, file data, I guess. That's fine. Lengthen blocks will be bytes blocks of the size and bytes, size bytes. Is that all I have to do? I don't remember. I mean, single and double, these should be filled with zeros by default. All the other extents should be filled with zeros, I think, by doing this. All the other data in here should be filled with zeros, I'm hoping. I don't think I have to specify it. I'm hoping I don't, at least. I don't think it matters if I'm compiling, though. Uh, last modified timestamp, okay. Not last changed, last modified. Parentheses around type name and size of. Okay, you don't tell me where that's at, though. Oh, this? Oh, because I did inode T. No, size of inode. Glad you didn't tell me what line that was on. Come on, man. You have one job, compiler. You have one job, okay. Uh, let's do this again. Okay. We'll have inode 2 plus rest of the files. Well, actually, we'll do bootloader. inode 2 will be the bootloader. Then the rest of the files. I'm sorry. We, we wrote the boot sector in the second stage bootloader. I'm going to write the third stage bootloader at inode 2 as a reserved inode. That's what I'm going to do. Plus, uh, let's do this rest of the files, starting with third stage bootloader. We'll start this at two, and then we'll do inode ID equals inode ID plus plus. Keep another running total as well. First block. Uh, okay, first data block plus one. That's what this is going to be. Uh, all right, this is where we're going to start writing extents at for the rest of the files, and that is going to be right after this data from the root directory. It, this could be longer, and we could have room to expand the root directory, but we'll worry about that later, <laughs> I guess. But this is where these next files are going to be written to on disk, starting at this location. That's why I'm just setting these up, because I'm going to do this in a loop. Uh, num files minus two, right? Because getting rid of these two, we're starting here. So it'll be minus two. Yeah, I guess we can clear it to make sure, though. Mem set inode zero, size of inode. Clear out inode first. All right. And I'll set the new ID. Set the new type. I'm doing it both ways. You can do it this way. 
can do it this way, all in one, or you can do it separated out, but that's okay. I know type will be file type file, not directory. Um, we can start I at two. Yeah, we can do that. We can start at two and not do minus minus. We can do that. Not do minus two. Because then we can do files I dot size. There we go. Makes a little more sense. Makes it a little easier. And this will be bytes to sectors of that size. And this we can have, we can still do this though, if we want. We'll have inline designated initializers, that's fine. This will just be the same data, so. That is all right. And extent zero. First block can be the first block. And we can still do that. Okay. And we can write it to the image pointer. And then we can update the first block for the next file. Plus equal the length of blocks that was written. Next file will go at this block. Right after that one. Okay, so that will be all right. So after we've written the invalid inode, the root directory inode, and all the files, those inodes, then we have to pad out to the rest of the block that we're currently writing. Uh, so I can do that. Which will be padding bytes from, what did I put num files plus two? Well, that's true, because we have number of files plus the root directory plus the invalid inodes. So yeah, num files plus two times the size of inode t. That's how much data we just wrote. That's the number of bytes we need to go from there to the full block size to pad out to the block. I guess I can write one of those, that's fine. Image pointer equals one. Put that up a little in case I'm covering that. Write out the number of files, that, no that amount of inodes, that amount of bytes, pad it out to the block size, write in one of those. Hopefully that works. And that would be all for the inodes. Implicitly declaring memset. Nice. That would be in string. Subscript of pointer function un32t. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, I did square brackets. Duh. Square brackets. What do you do? What language is that? No language does that for function calls. You're crazy. All right. You're crazy. Okay, the next one after 16K is 20K. Yeah. Okay, cool. We wrote some inodes there. I'm going to just assume that they worked, but we wrote some inodes there. <laughs> we'll write the data blocks next. Which will be the last thing, which is awesome. That's the French true. I want the English one. Okay, the data block. So the data block starts, you know, coming right after the, uh, the inode blocks. And that contains the actual file data, including the directory entries for the root directory. That will be at the first data block, because that is what we set up to, uh, to happen from the sort of data bitmaps and things up here, wherever that was. 
uh, the first data block, but we're writing the root directory at the first data block. Yeah, root directory is the first file data on disk. It starts at the first data block. So that's the data we'll write first, the root directory directory entries. That's a tongue twister. So I'll set directory entry T. We'll set a directory entry up first for ID one for the root directory. Root directory, directory entries uh, will be first data on disk at disk blocks. Okay, so the ID will be one and the name uh, will be each name for each file in the root directory. So my directories, I want to always have and start with um, two special entries, the dot and the dot dot for current directory and the parent directory. So dot will refer and have the same ID as the directory in which it is in. And dot dot will be the parent directory or the one right above, one level up. Now for root, they're both going to be the same because they both point to root. But for other files, they'll be different. Other nested directories underneath root, these values will be different. Well, dot will be the directory, but dot dot will be, you know, different for those. So the name for this, simple, be dot. It's not yakko or wacko, but it's dot. Um, and I can write that because that is a directory entry. So write address of directory entry, size of directory entry one to the image pointer, make sure it equals one. Okay, then I can string copy into directory entry dot name dot dot. That's fine. And then since it equals the same value, we can just you know, write that again, because it'll be pointing to the same thing. Okay. Um, then we will start writing other data. Actually, we just need an inode ID, don't we? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll have a unt32t. We'll just have ID that'll equal start at two for all the rest of the files after the root directory starting with like the bootloader and other stuff. So for I, um, okay. So for each directory entry, I'm just going to right now, I'm going to write all the files to the root directory and then we can do setup. If we want to mess with the file system, I can do easier setup later when we have abstractions built up to create and change directories and things and move files around. Um, we can call like rename file or move or change directory and, and stuff like within third stage bootloader or within the kernel before we start like the shell execution. Just to make this simple right now, I'm going to write everything just to the root directory. Later on, if we want that to be different, we can move things around at a first time boot within the kernel. So hopefully that makes sense. Right now, it's all just going to be like it is now, kind of a flat file format just within the root directory. I'm going to set the ID for each one of these directory entries to our current running total ID. And the name is going to be whatever the file name is. So copy that in directory entry dot name will be, um, these, these are prefixed sort of with dot dot bin. So I only want to get the name of the file because dot dot slash bin is not going to exist within my root directory. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but it's zero base. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is at an offset of seven within the name every time to skip that slash bin slash prefix. So I can string copy with the address of files I dot name seven. I can get the address of that and copy that in. So copy file name, uh, skipping over And slash prefix just to make sense there we get the new id equals id i'll do plus plus we'll do that yeah and then we'll write again yeah that'll work okay the bootloader i have at inode 2 so i want the bootloader to be at inode id 2 so will that work out with this like boot sect and second stay. Oh yeah, yeah, it will. If I if I start at this in the file, I keep forgetting. I'm not gonna have these two files in the root directory. I guess I could. 
Maybe I'll add that later. Right now I'm not going to have these two files in the root directory. I'm going to have the rest of the files. So it might look a little jank, but I could add these in there. It's just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do it before, so I'm confusing myself because I, I haven't done this. I could add those in, I suppose, and then ID would just be zero and it would match the ID of the files. Well, the bootloader would be two. The rest can be, I guess, whatever. But what, what I should do is start this there and then I can just make this I. Then I don't have to worry about that. If I do that, then the third stage will start at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It'll be in this order in the root directory. So hopefully that's the order that I want to write files in, because <laughs> that's the order that's going to happen. Yeah, that should be okay. That'll write all the directory entries for the files in the root directory. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was confused. Okay. But yeah, this will write the directory entries to the data block for the root directory, to the data blocks, effectively, for the root directory. After that, we'll write the actual data. That'll come after the root directory because it is inode one. So inode two, we'll start with the bootloader. We'll write these files there. Okay. Okay, confuse myself for a second. That's all right. I want to F write. I want to pad out to the end of the block, wherever that may be. Into the current block. Write the padding bytes for the number of files we wrote, plus two. This will be size of directory entry, T. This time, this plus two is different from the plus two up here, so that is kind of confusing. But this plus two is due to these two dot and dot dot entries. Files plus two. Although, is that true? Because I'm starting at two here. I think I had a bug in my implementation before. I was starting at, in testing, I started at zero, but I started the ID number at two for the bootloader, because that's what it's at. It's a reserved ID two. But I don't think that would work. Because I have these, but what if what if I want to add the boot sector and second stage in here? I don't think I can do that currently. That might not be an issue though. But it is if I want to change that code later within the operating system itself. I'm not sure. Let me write this first and I'll think about that in my subconscious. <laughs> but I'm writing out file data plus two, time size of directory entry T. Uh so number of padding bytes. Because that needs to go to the block size. I want to write one of those, do image, pointer, make sure that equals one. All right, we'll write the file data. Yeah, because here I did num files. So that would mean I'd have to write everything within files, and I changed it to look like this. So I'd have to write these two, but I don't want to write these two. This would still start at two, because the file data is in the boot block. I would have to write inodes for the boot block files, the boot sector and the bootloader. I would have to write inodes for those, and I don't have inodes for those. That'll be something. Maybe I'll maybe I'll consider that later. I'll put that here, an overall general one. Um, add inodes and root directory directory entry. Or boot sect and second stage. Currently, those are only in the boot block, but are not in the regular file system anywhere. Okay, I don't know if I want to do that, but that might be a to do item later. Okay, so we'll do it like this. We have files i.fp for the file pointers, which I don't know if they're at the start of the data or not. They should be from rewinding right here. We shouldn't mess with them until this point. 
let's do um blocks files i dot do bytes to blocks bytes to blocks i dot size so many blocks we want to write i guess i can okay i put in login i should add login yeah that's true so the file i want to write the number of blocks that the file has Right, I kept a running total of the number of bytes I wrote. I have bytes written here, do I know? I'll do this. It's written equals zero. So I wrote these in sectors for whatever reason, which is fine. Instead of blocks. Maybe I could write these in blocks, but that's that's fine. I already did i. j equals zero. j less than the number of blocks times sector size. So this is blocks times the number of sectors in a block. So that will convert the number of blocks to the number of sectors needed to write this file. So I'll write these in sectors because it might end up reading and writing a partial sector. That's why I did it. Okay. So I don't have a sector in here. I can add one. All right. Okay. We'll read, read into that sector. Uh, size of sector, one temp. Actually, we'll reverse this. So we get the actual number of bytes. We'll write one byte size of sector number of times. That way we can get the number of bytes actually written from fread. Or we can call read directly and get the number of bytes, but whatever. It's a little kind of a hack, but that works. It might be slower, that's okay. All right, I wanna f write from the sector. One, number of bytes actually read that number of times. I'll write that to the image. And I'll increment the number of bytes we actually wrote to the image by the number of bytes. Okay. Uh, and if that's less than a sector size, we'll break. We have a partial sector that we wrote. We reached end of file. Okay. Then we'll clear out the sector. And we'll pad out to end of block for this file. Since each file is stored in disk blocks, we have to pad out to the end of the current partial block for each file. If it's at the end of a block, it will pad out zero bytes, which is fine. But if not, we'll get the number of bytes to the next file. Just fill it with nulls with zeros. This one I can reverse because it doesn't matter as much. Number of padding bytes. This will be the bytes actually written. The block size. And the image pointer. Put that one over there. One. There we go. Okay, so we write it. Um, instead of doing cleanup down here, we could do cleanup within the data blocks, I guess. That's how I did it before, but it'll return and then we'll get it. So it's actually, that's fine. No. We can just do this, that's fine. And then that'll go back up, that will reset, where is it? That'll reset bytes written here, and we'll write it all to the disk, and we'll keep doing that through all of these files. That should be okay. Okay, I will add login, login would be good. Yeah, image name, okay. Uh, let's do block size. We'll do that. 
And then when it gets to writing these, it'll say this file, this block. Okay. That should give us some factual data. So this will be the block size. I could do total, total disk blocks as within main only, really. That'd be file blocks, so I'd have to do it there. Okay, total disk blocks. This will be file blocks, I guess. Or no, this will be disk size. I have that in super block. I'm gonna add the disk size as something up here. It won't be a constant, we'll just default it. Default size is 1.44 meg. data blocks. I'll just do this. Invites to blocks. All right. So the total number of blocks that can be on a disk and the block size. I'll do that. That seems all right, so let's hope that that works. That should be all we need to do. Should is a good word, which means probably isn't gonna happen, but you never know. Undeclared identifier temp, 242. Uh, what did I do temp? <laughs> I'm F reading. This is in files, right? Files i.fp. Reading that into it, reading a sector from the file pointer and writing that sector to the image. Uh, more percent conversions and data arguments. I don't have the block size. Oh, there we go. Creating disk image, test image that then block size, 496, total disk blocks, 360. I should put the number of file blocks as well. File blocks. And that will be file blocks. Simple enough. There we go, file blocks, 22 for this one. This is two plus one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12, 14, plus six, but it says there's two more. The boot block in the second stage, that's why there's two more. <laughs> but I don't write those, because those are already written to the boot block. So I could, I could do minus two. Let's do this, file blocks, um, sans, boot block. There we go. The, the boot block for the boot sector and the bootloader, which aren't in this list, should not be counted. So yeah, 14 plus six is 20. Yeah, so that looks correct. So we have an image of 106, 240. 106, 240 divided by number of blocks we have, just to make sure things line up. It is 25. That's 25 blocks on the disk. So that'd be 22 with all the files. The root directory would be one. That'd be 23. Do I have more stuff? Does that line up? I have the inode and data bitmaps. Yeah, and the inode blocks. So I think that lines up. Approximately. I don't know. If it doesn't, we'll find out when stuff doesn't work later. So <laughs> that's all right. Um, that is writing the disk image. Which isn't too bad. I know I take forever doing things, but that, that isn't too bad. We have some to-dos, of course, which might never get done, but that's okay. Um, that's writing the image to begin with, and that's all I'm going to do for this video. Okay, I have to add a little bit onto the end here, so I'll be splicing this in. Hopefully it doesn't we uh, make too bad of a transition somewhere, but anyway. 
So I forgot to clean up, um, I forgot to close the image pointer file, so I need to do that. For one. <laughs> Even though it should be okay, we'll close that as well. And also, I need to pad out to the end of our disk size. I'm not doing that here. Pad out to full disk size. Whatever our disk size is which has gotten like way up here, this default value of 1.44 megs. That's how big our disk should be when we end. So I need to pad out to whatever that size is. So I should have a number at this point of the number of blocks we wrote. The number of blocks written should be some number. I'm not sure. We write at least six blocks for the boot block, the super block, uh, we write inode bitmap blocks. We write data bitmap blocks. We write inode blocks. And we write data blocks. So I guess I could add all of those up. Two, three, four, five, six. And then starting after that, we have to pad out to the disk size. So I guess I can try that. So one for the boot block, one for the super block. Um, num inode bitmap blocks. Num data bitmap blocks. Num inode blocks. I think this will work. Hopefully this, hopefully the calculations are all correct, because that would be the number of blocks we've already written, and we need to pad out from that to uh, the end of the disk. So we'll do four. For i equals zero, i less than disk blocks. So do we have disk blocks on here? Uh, we have it down here. So that's bytes to blocks, disk size. So I can do that. Get rid of that highlighting. Bytes to blocks, bytes to blocks, <laughs> disk size. So we need that number minus however many blocks we already wrote. That's how many blocks we need to write to go to the end of the disk from the point where we are now in the disk image. So we'll just F write the no block, a block size, one, to the image pointer. And I can F cert that equals one, that's fine. Okay, and that'll pad out, yeah, to the full disk size. And blocks, okay. Just needed to make sure that works. So we should have 360 disk blocks that we wrote for this. Uh, 1466112, so I think I messed up somewhere, or else 1.44 meg is not exactly a number in blocks, I'm not sure. 1466112. That doesn't seem right. Uh, that's 357, so we're off by three. Interesting. So the number of blocks written is three extra. Maybe data is oversubscribed. File blocks plus one. One block for the root directory entries. The file blocks.
is for each file. So that would have to be reduced by two. For the blocks that we're actually writing to disk, well, that we've already written to disk, we're counting them twice for the boot block, so that's not exactly great. I'll have to do that. Maybe it would make more sense to separate it out so I don't have to do this. <laughs> Right. Uh, that's closer. That looks a lot closer to what it should be. So what happens when I paste that in? Ooh, 359. Okay, so we got those two. So is there an extra block somewhere? I don't know where I would be counting an extra block. I'm not sure. That's the only time I have file blocks. Oh, I would add, yeah, I would add one. This would be seven. We've written the boot block, the super block, the inode bitmap, the data bitmap, the inodes, the data, and the root directory is part of the data, but was not included, I don't think, within the data blocks. Oh yeah, actually no, I had one for the root directory. Well, that's lame. <laughs> I don't know where the extra one is coming from. That's not good. My math is off. It's an off by one error, so it has to be C, right? Lame. Um, I'm going to find out where that is, what my issue is in my math. That's not right, and I'll be back again. All right, hopefully this is the final, final part of this part. <laughs> I just, I can't do math, God, geez. Um, I, this was subtracted by two in the super block. File blocks minus two for these. That is not correct. It should be minus one. It should not be minus two for the boot sect and second stage because they both do not take up one block in size. Combined, the boot sector and second stage bootloader combined take up one block. Otherwise, they wouldn't both fit in one boot block. So I should not have subtracted two, I should subtract one. And effectively this just equals file blocks, but I'll have this here in the comment to explain it. But there we go. <laughs> that makes it add up. Now that doesn't mean all of the data, I added some, some debug printing here as well. That doesn't mean all the data is gonna line up exactly on disk if I didn't do something right. So we might have bugs later, but as far as writing a full size disk, you know, we, sh we should have that now. Um, yeah, 1470208, so approximately uh, 4096, divide, print, then quit, approximately 358. <laughs> That's not the full size either. It's actually less than I wanted. But we should have written a boot block, a super block, and then... One bitmap, one data bitmap, one inode bitmap, one data bitmap, one inode block. That'd be five plus data blocks 22. So that equals 27, but it's not writing all of them out. That is annoying. I have my debug printing here. It should have all been written out to at least one block size for that stuff. But it's saying, no, we didn't write all that out. Otherwise, it should add up to the total number of disk blocks, which is 360, right? Should be. We'll have to see. We know the boot block and super block were full. Inode bitmap should write out to the end of the block. Data bitmap should go to the end of the block. That's four. The inode blocks is only one, but... Write the inodes, and we write this to the end of the block. This one is plus two. Should that one be plus two? I mean, it probably should be, but. Yeah, because the invalid inode and the root directory. Number of files. Maybe that isn't plus two. Because number of files is including the boot sector in the second stage bootloader. So we could do that. That would add a couple more bytes, I believe. So 
that's slightly larger, but still not right. <laughs> I just want the size to line up. Then I know we have the full normal disk size that we're used to doing. That's 358. So I'm missing two somewhere, but that should be one. It has to be within the data blocks. I'm not calculating these right or something. Files plus two. No, just number of files. Because we subtract two because we're not including two entries for them anyway. And then we add these two, so it's just number of files. Uh, okay. That doesn't make a difference, though, I don't think. One four seven oh four six four. Three fifty nine. That's close. We go to the end of these blocks. That should be all right. I don't know. Pretty close. Just one block off somewhere. But that is C. That is what C does to you, unfortunately. Gives you a bunch of off by one errors. Of course. Sound like Eeyore right now. <laughs> oh. Oh, number of inodes. Invalid inode zero and directory entry. Well, I think that one is actually accurate. The bitmap blocks. Is that accurate then? I don't think that is. So number of files would be off by two. I know we're adding two here for the inodes for the invalid in the root directory. But then we would need plus two for the bitmap blocks, would we not? But then that would, the other size would be off then by one, the other direction. I don't know if that would be right. It'd be the number, well, this would be the number of inodes is the number of bits that we're going to have. So I should, I should do that anyway. That's how, that's how many inodes we're going to have. That's mm, still 464, which is 359. Should be data bitmap. Uh, where do the file blocks come from? That's from this. Sans boot block would be one, actually. Hmm. File blocks. The file blocks number counts two extra, because it's getting bytes to blocks for the first two that we're not counting. Okay. That would be two extra that we're not counting, actually. But we do have one for root directory entries. Okay. That would be two. Uh. I'll <laughs> uh, do plus one. Do that. Uh, okay, that number is correct. I've seen that number before. 1474560. I need to make my stuff better, obviously. <laughs> so I can't even debug it properly. I can't do math. That's 360 blocks. That is correct. Okay. So my issue, my issues stem from having these two inside of the array. Maybe I should separate it out from the array, and then files would have the right size that we're actually counting for the data blocks. But whatever. So these are the file blocks. Um, that counts two extra. However, in other cases, we only count one extra <laughs> for the actual block written to disk, because the boot block is only one block. That is down in write data blocks, effectively. So, okay. I figured it out. All right, we got the full disk blog. We got the full thing working. So next video, if I didn't say this already, I'm ending the video, right? <laughs> next video, I'm going to change the boot sector, second stage bootloader, and third stage bootloader to work with this new disk image and the new file system setup that we wrote to this disk image. 
and we'll change the boot process. It'll be it should be simpler actually, at least for the boot sector. It should hopefully be simpler than it is currently using a LBA, just a zero based LBA number instead of cylinder head sector crap addressing, right? <laughs> And uh, yeah, the boot sector will load second stage and itself. It'll load the boot block. It will also probably load the third stage bootloader. Um, second stage can then just jump to third stage because it'll be loaded to memory. The third stage bootloader written in C instead of assembly can load the kernel and its data from disk by reading, you know, the inode values and the extents and things for the kernel. We'll just change the boot process on the next one. And after that, we can move on to some new syscalls for open, close, seek, read, write, and then we'll build up abstractions on top of those from there. But next video, changing the boot process. Hope you enjoyed watching, but if you didn't, that's fine too. Thank you for watching regardless, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.